all right guys today we are going to discuss the situation of indian national movement from 1987 to 1987 in the coming classes now i'm going to cover the last 10 periods of indian national movement a lot of events occurred during this period of time as you can see in the slide that there are a lot of points that needs to be discussed a lot of events that occurred during this period of time so it is uh, my request that if you have any queries regarding the past classes not only that you have covered covered from the module 4 but also from module 3 please clarify because the coming classes will be a bit difficult to understand a lot of things will be discussed in the coming classes so i request you to please keep your reading materials with you please keep your reading materials because it will become more easier for you to understand what i'm trying to teach over here as you can see in these given slides there are a lot of uh, events that are linked from the period 1937 to 1947 so in the last class we have discussed or we ended our class on the note that the government of india act which was passed in the year 1935 it provided for the provincial election and the elections took place in the year 1937 the result of this election was that congress was able to form its government in 7 out of 11 provinces and for around 20 odd months the government or the congress tried to work effectively in those provinces we will be starting from those provincial elections and then we will try to cover all the important events that have occurred another thing is that if you will see a syllabus you will come across that in the module 4 we are basically in the second topic or we are dealing with the political movements of Gandhi where we have discussed the non-cooperation movement and the events that led to the non-cooperation movements and the um, events that occurred after the withdrawal of the non-cooperation movement then we have discussed about the civil disobedience movement and we have covered the after effects of the civil disobedience movement also the last portion that is left is the quit india movement which will be discussed in this class but if you will see a syllabus um, i want you to look into your syllabus you will see that b and e portion which basically talks about the transfer of power and the growth of communalism and partition of india both these topics will be covered um, interrelated and will be discussed simultaneously in my coming classes so please be careful and pay attention to what i am teaching another thing that the left movements in india will be discussed later on so right now i am trying to deal with the last 10 years which will be covering the quit india movement the transfer of power starting from the august offer moving to the crips mission then the wavels plan and the cabinet mission plan and lastly i'll be talking about the growth of communalism and how it led to the partition of india so starting with the provincial elections please draw this chart that i have uh, made in this slide all the important events that which occurred after one event that led to the other event for example that the provincial elections in the year 1937 it resulted into the formation of the congress in seven out of 11 provinces these uh, congress ministries were functioning effectively in their uh, given provinces but after the outbreak or at the outbreak of the second world war the indian government without consulting the ministries dragged india into the second world war that resulted into a lot of negotiations between the british government and the indian national congress on the one hand and the muslim league on the other hand so let's start with the provincial elections the government of india act 1935 provided for greater autonomy for the provinces it aimed at responsible government at the province and the ministries of respective provinces were made accountable for their legislature. The provincial elections under the new government of India at 1935 were held in February 1937. Although Congress rejected the constitutional reforms initially, but after a hectic debate, the Congress decided to contest the elections in 1937. The Congress swept the polls in most of the provinces. It gained majority in Bombay, Madras, UP, Bihar, Odisha, Central Provinces and the Northwest Frontier Provinces. 
the congress did not do well in the elections of the upper houses as the franchise there was limited to upper strata only not only the congress participated in the 1937 election but muslim league also contested the election to various legislative bodies but the achievement of the muslim league was moderate out of the 485 reserved muslim seats the league could capture only 110 seats even in the muslim majority provinces of the punjab the north west frontier province bengal and the sindh the league was defeated by the rival muslim parties in march 1937 rajendra prasad moved a resolution for conditional acceptance of office which was accepted the condition that was attached by the congress was that the governors would not use their special powers to intervene with the functioning of ministry gandhi himself was in favor of conditional acceptance of office the congress leaders were invited to form the government in the six provinces where they were in majority however congress ministries were formed in july 1937 in seven out of 11 provinces later congress formed coalition in two others only bengal and punjab had non congress ministries the congress ministries tried to improve the condition of the people within the narrow limits of the powers given to them under the act of 1935 the congress ministries set up new standards of honesty austerity and public service they drastically reduced their own salaries and mostly traveled second or third class on the railways they promoted civil liberties repealed restrictions on the press and radical organization permitted trade unions and kisan organization to function and grow curbed the power of the police and released political prisoners including number of revolutionary terrorist they also passed agrarian legislations dealing with tenancy rights security of tenure rent reduction and relief and protection to peasant debtors the congress government in the provinces introduced prohibition in selected areas undertook harijan upliftment programs and gave great attention to primary higher and technical education and public health support was given to khadi and other village industries modern industries too were encouraged apart from this one of the major achievement of the congress government in the provinces was the handling of communal rights congress was achieving the aim of self government after the outbreak of the second world war on 1st september 1939 the government of india immediately joined the war without consulting the provincial ministries or you can see the congress were ruling or controlling the provinces although congress was in sympathy with the victims of fascism but they raised a pertinent question that how it was possible for an enslaved nation to aid others in their fight for freedom they therefore demanded that india must be declared free or at least effective power be transferred to indians it could actively participate in the war the british refused to accept the contention and even tried to put the religious minorities and princes against the congress therefore the congress asked its ministries to resign and a call for a limited satyagraha was given by gandhi in october 1940 this resulted into the 28 month reigning period of the congress in the provincial uh, in the provinces Congress was quite aware of difficulties of the British government and thus did not make any efforts to embarrass the government. Mahatma Gandhi said, "We do not seek our independence out of Britain's ruins." Similarly, Jawaharlal Nehru asserted, "England's difficulty is not India's opportunity." In July 1940, the Congress Working Committee at its meeting at Pune passed a resolution assuring the British of wholehearted cooperation in men and money in efforts for the effective organization of the defense of the country. However, it was made clear that cooperation would be offered on two conditions. First, the British should acknowledge India's right to complete independence. 
and secondly a provisional national government should be set up at the center immediately this national government should have representatives of the main political parties in the country however the conservative government of britain was not willing to transfer power to the indians during war and therefore rejected the offer after rejecting the demands of congress for cooperation lord linlithgow the viceroy of india made a fresh offer on behalf of the british government on 8th august 1940 which is popularly known as august offer this offer was made in the backdrop of the fact that the war situation grew grave during the middle of 1940s the british forces suffered serious reverse in europe great britain was in dire need of india's real support in the prosecution of the war effort the viceroy was therefore authorized to make a more concrete offer to indians for their readiness to cooperate in the british war effort let us look into the salient features of the offer uh, the following terms of the august offer is given in your slide please go through it uh, the most important point of the august offer was that the british government agreed to grant the dominion status to india apart from that the british government also agreed that indians were to be allowed to frame a new constitution for themselves If you see the third point you will see that the government agreed that after the war the government would set up a body representative of the principal elements in India's national life in order to devise the framework of the new constitution the new constitutional scheme was to be built within the british commonwealth of nation the britishers also agreed to give an equal weightage to the minorities they also agreed that the voice voice executive council to be expanded also to create a war advisory committee consisting of the indian representative and the most important point the government was not to transfer power to any party whose authority was not acceptable to any other major party in india if you will read the points that were given under the august offer you will see that there are a major drawbacks or major shortage due to which the congress did not accept the august offer for the beginning you can see that the congress have demanded that the objective is to achieve purna swaraj or the complete independence whereas over here the britishers are ready to have grant the dominion status again reminding you that under the dominion status the britishers will have a upper hand secondly the congress mentions that there is no time limit given for the establishment of this constituent body with that it is not clear that whether the britishers are going to set up a constituent assembly or whether it will result into the formation of the round table con- uh, conference because under the august offer it is uh, written down that the indians were to be allowed to frame a new constitution for themselves but the process or the body that will be involved into the formation of constitution is not specified and the last point is the most important because the british government is uh, giving the equal weightage to all the parties present at this period of time this is the time when the muslim league will also became a stakeholder in the negotiation if you will read that it says that the government was not to transfer power to any party whose authority was not acceptable to any other major group in india so basically there are going to be two emerging major groups one the indian national congress and the other the muslim league and if they do not cooperate uh, if both of them do not cooperate then there will be a deadlock situation so this resulted into the failure of the august offer neither the congress accepted it nor the muslim league the august offer failed to fulfill the expectations of the congress and muslim league even leaders like gandhi nehru and raj gopal acharya who were for extending conditional cooperation to the british war effort turned against them gandhi was invited by the congress to lead the movement against the british government in the view of the critical war situation gandhi adopted individual satyagraha or individual 
civil disobedience movement instead of mass civil disobedience movement. Gandhi wanted the movement to be symbolic in nature in order to register India's moral protest against the British altitude and to draw the attention of the world to the right of Indians to freedom. Gandhi proposed that men and women should protest individually against dragging India into the war by disassociating themselves from the war effort publicly and quoting arrest. Acharya Vinoba Bhave was selected by Gandhi as the first Satyagrahi. On 17th October 1940, he offered Satyagraha by delivering an anti-war speech in the village of Ponnar near Varda. He was arrested on 21st October, followed by Jawaharlal Nehru, Sardar Vallabhai Patel and etc. Subsequently, all important leaders in different provinces, including Congress, ex-ministers, parliamentary secretaries, members of AICC and CWC, former members of central and provincial legislatures and members of district and town congress committees quoted arrest. It was carried on to the close of 1941. Soon the movement spread all over the country. About 25,000 Satyagrahis quoted arrest. The movement was entirely non-violent and vindicated the protest of the people against the manner in which the British on behalf of India were fighting the war. The British policy towards India underwent a change following the quick victories of Japan in the year 1941. Two major changes occurred in 1941. Having occupied Western Europe, Nazi Germany attacked the Soviet Union and in December 1941, Japan launched a surprise attack on the US fleet at Pearl Harbor. Advancing rapidly through Philippines, Indochina, Indonesia and Malaya, Japan began to overrun Burma in March 1942 and thus brought the war to India's border. The British government realized that only a willing India could help them in meeting the growing victories of Japan. The allies of Britain also pressurized her to make a sincere bid to win the support of the Indians. Meanwhile, the Indian leaders released from prisons in early December were also worried about India's defense. They were once again ready to fully cooperate in the war effort if India was granted the substance of power. The British government too was under pressure from its American and Chinese allies. This resulted into the another set of negotiation between the British government and the Indian National Congress on the one hand and on the other hand the Muslim League. This negotiation or the set of negotiation is called as the Crips mission. Let's look into the proposals of this mission. The first provision was the dominion status to be granted after the war with the right to secede, which means that any province could, if it so desired, remain outside the Indian Union and negotiate directly with Britain. Secondly, there's a constitution-making body to be elected from provincial assemblies and princely states the prince will nominate after the war. Third, the British government would accept the constitution framed by the constituent assembly and negotiate a treaty agreement with India guaranteeing to protect racial and religious minorities. Fourth, if any province desires, it would remain outside the Indian Union and negotiate directly with the Britain. And lastly, in the transition period, British would be responsible for India's defence. If you will look closely into the proposals of the Crips mission, you will see the defects in this mission which resulted into the failure or which resulted into the non-acceptance of the mission by Congress as well as the Muslim League. The Congress passed a resolution in April 1942 rejecting the proposals and the main grounds that were uh, the main grounds that were laid down for the rejecting of the Crips mission were twofolded. Firstly, that the Crips mission provides for the separate or the separation from the Indian Union, which will mean the wrecking of the Indian unity. And secondly, that the participation on the constituent assembly is highly undemocratic. On these two reasons, the Congress rejected the Crips mission. 
whereas the muslim league rejected the proposal by stating that one indian union for two principal nations will not be accepted the failure of the crips mission left no meeting ground between the congress and the government the government was not prepared to part with its power while the congress insisted on the immediate transfer of power to the indians because it believed that an effective resistance against the japanese aggression could be organized only by a popular government gandhi who was not prepared to oppose the government by a mass movement so far was now convinced of the necessity of starting a mass movement again and hence changed his mind some congressmen were not convinced of his argument to start a mass movement with a view to force the british to hand over power to india during the course of war but all submitted before him and those who did not like c rajgopalachare and bhula bhai desai resigned from the congress in july 1942 the congress working committee met at vardha in july and demanded the immediate withdrawal of the british from india the all india congress committee ratified this quit india resolution at its meeting at bombay on 8th august 1942 gandhi told the british to quit and leave india in god's hand or to anarchy his message was do or die on 9th august however all the congress leaders were put behind the bars and the congress was declared an illegal body the agitated mass devoid of leadership resort to violent riots assaults and sporadic disorder in most parts of the country most of the historians agree that the quit india movement can be studied into the three broad phases the first phase from 9th to 15th august 1942 the second phase from 15th august to 30th September 1942 and the last phase from October 1942 to 1944 the first phase was massive and violent but quickly suppressed it was predominantly urban and included hartal strikes and dashes with police and army in most cities bombay as so often before was the main storm center during this phase Calcutta also witnessed many hartals there were violent dashes with heavy casualties in delhi and in patna control over the city was virtually lost for 2 days after a famous confrontation in front of the secretariat on 11th august the tata steel plant was totally closed down for 13 days in a strike in which the sole labor slogan was that they would not resume work until a national government had been formed at ahmedabad the textile strike which began during this period lasted for 3 months and a nationalist chronicle later described the city as the stalingrad of india the urban middle class was extremely prominent in this first phase spearheaded by students from the beginning of the second phase the focus shifted to the countryside with militant students fanning out from centers like banaras patna and katak destroying communications on a massive scale and leading a veritable peasants rebellion against white authorities strongly reminiscent in some ways of the revolt of 1857 northern and western bihar and eastern up midnapur in bengal and pockets in maharashtra karnataka and odisha were the major center of this second phase which saw the installation of a number of local national governments which however were usually short lived weakened by the brutal repression the movement from about the beginning of october 1942 entered its longest but also the least formidable phase that is the third in the final phase this phase was characterized by terrorist activity by educated youth directed against communication police and army installations occasionally rising to the level of guerrilla war such as the one along the north bihar nepal border led by jay prakash narayan the participation was on many levels school and college students remained in the forefront women actively participated and workers went on strikes 
दो पैसे कंसनट्रेटेड देयर ऑफेंस ऑन सिम्बल्स ऑफ अथॉरिटी देर वॉज कम्प्लीट एबसेंस ऑफ एंटी जमींदारी वाइलेंस देर वॉज नो क्रिमिनल क्लाशेज ड्यूरिंग द मूवमेंट द मूवमेंट डिड नॉट इवोक मच रिस्पॉन्स फ्रॉम द मर्चेंट कम्युनिटी द मुस्लिम लीग केप्ट अलूफ एंड द हिंदू महासभा कंडेम द मूवमेंट द कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी ऑफ इंडिया डिड नॉट सपोर्ट द मूवमेंट द इंडियन प्रिंसेस एंड द लैंड लॉर्ड वॉज सपोर्टिंग द वॉर एफर्ट एंड देर फोर डिड नॉट सिंपथाइज विद द मूवमेंट some congress leaders like rajgopal acharya also did not participate however the quit india movement marked the climax of the freedom struggle it was the last and the most important mass movement launched with the objective of complete emancipation of india